All right, um, Father Alex here. Um, if you if you're watching this, um, well, thanks for a start. Thanks for watching. Um, this is a video about ketamine, and um, I've not publicised this. I've just loaded this up to YouTube on my channel just to see if people uh, respond or are interested. I didn't want to be about self promoting myself or the Godcast. I wanted it to be about people who are struggling with the effects of ketamine. So I'm just going to really tell you if you're interested to listen. If you're not, then I'm sure you'll just switch off. But if you are, I want to tell you about my experience of uh, dealing with families who have been affected by ketamine um, through the autumn period here at, at St Matthew's in Burnley, where I'm the vicar. So and I post this because I want people to be aware and I want people to know that uh, if they've got young people in their family, they need to be uh, educated and told about the effects of ketamine and what it can do. So so we, we do a thing at church where families come and, and obviously I know lots of the families. And, and so what happened about, I don't know, maybe six or seven weeks ago, I just randomly asked the mum how she was and um she broke down and she told me about her child her 15 year old son who was using uh, ketamine and not only was he using ketamine he was dealing ketamine and this was having a really uh, detrimental impact on him on her as his mother and on uh, really uh, another sibling a very young child who was privy to the effects of of this um this drug. With that, I uh, I entered the social services world. Well, she asked if I could help and, and um, highlighted one of the issues that uh, this family didn't have an appointed social worker. They were using family support um, and was uh, being encouraged to uh, to explore parenting classes, um, kind of self help classes. Um, but it was clear to me that this mum was in such a turmoil. This wasn't really a, a viable option. She wasn't in a good place mentally herself because the child that she was uh, so concerned about, the child that she loved so much or, or loves so much, uh, was destroying his life by um, snorting ketamine. I then uh, put out a social media post um asking people if they were, were other people in that same situation. And I was quite staggered by the number of people who got in touch with me, mainly mums or all mums actually, who uh, told me about their circumstances and revealing some of the most disturbing and upsetting stories. I do kind of speak in stories. I don't know if it's because I follow Jesus and he spoke in parables, but... Well, the the power of a story, it, you know, particularly when it's a real story, it's true, it's not made up, really is a very powerful byproduct of the actual reality of what's going on. So mums shared their stories, which were just horrific, learning of 12 and 13-year-old girls who are addicted to ketamine and the effects that that has had on their bodies, on their urological systems, on their mental health on the mental health of their parents and their siblings. Um, but beyond that, all the mums felt a complete air of desperation that nobody was offering them the support they needed to get them through um, parenting their child. And it was clear that... Um, from what people would tell me, it, it felt like the public health services were not equipped to deal with these matters and ketamine being a relatively, it's not a new drug, but relatively new in the young person kind of genre, that's the right word. Um, it was very difficult to uh, find help, seek help, get help. Um, one for their child and one for themselves. And there's an interesting point there because the two are very much separate. So um, in normal circumstances, the, the individual will be appointed 
a social worker or a support worker. So it was really harrowing to hear uh, stories of uh, one story of a 13 year old girl who was so high on ketamine, who was in an abandoned house and there's a video of her being held by her ankles and then somebody lets her go and the child falls from the top of the stairs to the bottom of the stairs. Within all that kind of personal effect of, of ketamine, there's also issues being raised about um, uh, the exploitation. There's been two key words as I've spoken to mums about ketamine. One is a, a lack of support, which I know is uh, three words, uh, lack of support um, and exploitation. Who is um, stopping these children being exploited by um, drug dealers? And then as you dig deeper, understanding that actually some of these uh, dealers are 15, 16, 17 year old kids um, whizzing around uh, urban areas on bikes, dealing ketamine and um, just really sad just really sad and stories of reporting it to police and nothing getting done, reporting it to social services, not getting adequate support or responses and, and ultimately uh, just a huge number of women feeling helpless and um, incapable of, of, of helping the child that they love get off this uh, drug ketamine. I learned that ketamine was very cheap easy to get hold of, lasts for a relatively short space of time, gives a very pleasant feel, feeling when it's taken, um, and therefore these young people are seeking it out to get that fix and that high again. I don't know the mental uh, rationale behind it, whether it's a form of escapism, whether it's kind of journeying with mates, I, d I don't know what it is. But I made a lot. I made a bit of noise on social media, and subsequently, the Sunday Mirror got in touch and said they wanted to write an article. But, but also, uh, Bishop Philip North, who is the Bishop of Blackburn, uh, picked up and and had a chat with him and and offered some wonderful uh, support, and in many ways got the ball rolling by um, narrating a thought for the day on BBC Radio Four to try and stimulate some. A discussion around the issue of ketamine in young people. He described it as a ketamine crisis. From there, uh, I've got good, reasonably good relationships with uh, local partners, and I um, was invited to have a coffee with a gentleman called Lukeman Patel, as the chief operating officer of Burnley Borough Council, um, who I get on extremely well with. He's a he's a man of faith, and he he. He's a compassionate, caring individual and um, listen to the stories with real empathy, uh, but ultimately um, explain to me that the money, uh, the resource comes from a central place, from Lancashire County Council. And in many ways, his hands were tied as what he could actually do. Uh, but at the same time, um, having a real care and, and, and understanding about the situation. He then invited me to uh, to a meeting with some civil servants uh, from uh, the Deputy Prime Minister's office at Burnley Town Hall, which I was very pleased to attend. And the, the conversation was around community cohesion and was uh, really stemmed from the, the recent troubles around uh, the country um, in recent months where um, riots broke out in, in various parts of the country. I was invited to speak. I don't really know what wide Lutman wants me there, but but I did raise the point about community cohesion. Community cohesion is not just about the relationship between a, 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 a white British community and a Muslim, a, 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 a British Muslim community, uh, or <laughs> relationships between gay people and straight people, people who support Israel or people who support Palestine. It, it's uh, it, it's much more deeper than that, particularly in an urban setting where I'm on, on, on two of the uh, most deprived council estates in the country. It's, uh, I think, community cohesion is, a, is um, it, it, that is one way to look at it. But from my perspective, 
I think when you asked, if you asked my community about community cohesion, they would say that they've lost their trust in the police force and they've lost their trust in public health services. They have lost uh, their trust on virtually any public service um, that exists. And, and when you reach out to them with a matter of um, life or death, which is often, which has been uh, the case in Burnley, we have lost a young man to ketamine. Then, you, you, I suppose if you think, well, I I need help, I'm going to reach out. Then, where is it? And if it's not forthcoming, then what do you do? Where do you go? What happens? And um, there is uh, an absolute um, purpose by people in in social services to keep children in their family homes. But I have spoke to mums who've said. And the child needs to be actually removed from this family home because they are destroying the family unit and I'm not equipped to help. I don't know what to do. And every time you return the child to me, um, the wounds get deeper and the problems get more difficult and I need help and there are there isn't that outreach there. So if you're still sticking with this video, thank you. I just want to raise the uh, profile of people who are struggling with the effects of ketamine. So um, from there, um, the Sunday Mirror ran a, an article, a really quite powerful article that quoted uh, mums anonymously and quoted myself and the Bishop of Blackburn. And then um, as a result of that, I invited to meet some of the uh, services providers from Lancashire County Council and, and Burnley Council. And again, uh, these individuals do care. They do care that there's a ketamine crisis. They do have uh, working streams, I suppose, is the right thing to say. But there doesn't seem to be any immediate response to this um, question is, how do you how do you stop young people taking ketamine? And um, as this process has continued, more people have contacted me saying, you know, my... My son or my daughter is using ketamine. One mum contacted me saying, can you help? Ketamine is killing my son and it's killing my community. Um, one mum rang me and said, if you, I could, if you could, do, if I, I could do one thing, bear in mind I'm just a parish vicar, if I could do one thing, get ketamine off the estates. Well, I, I can't do that. Um, I can't do that. I've got no capacity to do that, but there are services up there who who can. Um, you know, questions to be asked of the police and their response to one uh, drug dealing of ketamine, uh, two is the exploitation of children. So it is a real messy, messy story. It's been uh, heartbreaking actually, to listen to people tell me about their children, children that they love just as much as you love your children if you've got them of your own. I've had people say to me, uh, I'm not a bad mum, I'm not a bad person, I just don't know what to do, I just need some help. And so uh, further meetings are planned for um, matters of ketamine, I've started a kick out ketamine support group in my parish and um, time will tell if that's useful or not. But if you have stuck with this to the end, I would encourage you to share it um, because I want people, um, I sometimes think, you know, only needs one or two people to be uh, prodded enough to uh, drop a big big wedge of support into these places on our uh, urban estates and uh, this un this uh, matter of ketamine abuse is not unique to Burnley, I'll tell you that for nothing it's across the country it is a uh, real I think it's a tide that's coming in slowly but could uh, come awash and be a bit of a tsunami amongst our most vulnerable, vulnerable kids as they seek some sort of escapism from their difficult um, and complex lives. Um, yeah.
So, yeah. I know there'll be there's no hurrah about this. So I'm just going to post it, and if you if you've watched it, thank you. If you're a Christian who or a person who likes to pray, please pray for communities affected by ketamine. And if you are somebody in power, please speak into that. If you're uh, an NHS worker or a doctor or a practitioner, a social worker, uh, and if you've been affected by this, then just reach out to me because I do know that that these uh, services are underfunded and the effect that that is having on individuals who went into the profession with wonderful intentions to change society, to be a force for good, to help people turn their lives around, are actually now thinking about leaving these professions because the challenge has become too much, it's too great, the expectation is too hard. So as my phone rings, I'll leave that with you, and thanks for watching.